situation. <laughs> Apparently, you know, because we just do it every day, every day here. As in, you know, stuttering, stammering. But you have to just... remember, Tokwe, that even when we started, yeah. we were quite nervous. Yes. When Mariah was going to do her first... Yeah, yeah. I was stammering throughout. <laughs> nervous, I was shaking, I had no idea. But now you don't see the camera, there's no camera. <laughs> yeah. The camera is your friend. Yes, yes. Yeah. Comfortable. <laughs> Amaka Fresh. Always, always. I love your glasses. Hi, thank you so much. Yes, Yanga Lagos, Yanga. always. Always repping in Yanga Lagos. <laughs> so today is the birthday of my of two of my farms. Ah. So my nephew, he's our first grandchild. My ah. nephew, yeah, Giovanni, happy birthday, my darling. Nice. You know, I love you so much and I wish you all the best. And my fav, if you know me, you will know my auntie Onyinye Nkata. <laughs> happy birthday, Auntie Onyinye. You know, I love you ah, so much. I nice. got you. Thanks for all ah, you do. Thank fantastic. you. Fantastic. That's great. Yeah. Oh, no, my How are you doing? Yeah, today is what Thursday. <laughs> and, and today I'm in the office. Like, oh, you're, like, not, you're, not, you're not going yeah, anywhere. So you don't meet really outside. To do. I have so much things to do, but I'm excited. Um, I'm planning this. I have a wedding. Another wedding. I have a party on when? Saturday. Saturday. <sighs> what kind of party? I can't spray. You can't spray. Yeah, spray. yeah but what kind of party? Spray. There is a birthday party. Party. Okay. party. So, <clears throat> me, 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 me and Brown had a meeting yesterday. Yeah. They are just announcing you're touching on TV. Yeah. We are not spraying. I said, no problem. <laughs> not spraying. No, not but spraying. you, you see, I understand yeah. where uh, ESCC is coming from. If yeah. they're even allowed to even prosecute such cases because they are financial crime. Right. Not, yeah. uh, anyway, but that's not... What, my own is, I thought before enforcing it, because mm -hmm. the law has been there, but nobody yeah. took it seriously. Exactly. Before enforcing it, warn us. Yeah. Yes. Don't come and... Like it went on for a while, though. This, this, this thing, we, even on this table, we've taken this story of the fact that spraying was illegal. We took it a few years ago. I think mm -hmm. I can remember talking about it on yeah. the show yeah. several times, but it was never enforced. That's what I'm now saying. Enforcing. Enforcing it. Just enforcing tell us before you enforce that. If you like, continue spraying, all of you are going to jail. And but now they don't need to tell us. They've already caught one person by uh, cutting one person and uh, sending it to the jail. Because yeah. like this uh, Kubana, yeah. one of the charges I, I was listening to uh, Kenny is backdated to 2020. 2020. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they are digging up all the old videos. So we have that. Means, that means the same. Go on your social media and, and delete everything. So yeah, start, start deliting. Everybody will come and catch you. They should start with the politicians. Plenty of them were throwing. I saw a video of one of them throwing money. Yes, exactly. So they should go there first. So they can't so right them, let's go in the break. It's Thursday. I know you guys are really eager to be talking. <laughs> Calm down. Let's go through the break. <laughs> we come back. We'll look at the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Violent ethnic agitators will pay the price, says Tinumbu. Drama, confusion, trail EFCC's bid to arrest Yahaya Belo. Jimo, okay, Akitariwa, others kick over membership issues. Kaduna Assembly Speaker alleges threat from um, El Rufai's son. Train 8, Nigeria and LNG expansion plans may be threatened by contract breaches. CBN not defending Naira with foreign reserves, says Cardoso. PDP has no leadership change plan, governors insist. And APC kicks against the legal court order on Ganduje. All right, which story are we starting with? So let me start with um, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Yesterday said it would arraign a former Kogi state governor, Yaya Bello, mm -hmm. today before the Federal High Court in Abuja. 
The anti-graft agency said it has secured a warrant to arrest him. The warrant ended, <laughs> the warrant put an end to a 12-hour siege on his residence. As in, I watched that on, um, on so many live streams and it was crazy. Mm -hmm. they, they really went all out. And then there was a conflicting order by two courts. A court in Abuja actually gave um, EFCC the warrant and the right to um, effect the, uh, go ahead with the arrest. While the court in Lokoja, sitting in Lokoja, um, said that they couldn't do so. So there was a conflicting order, you know, on that. Um, but the interesting thing here is that the, uh, the current governor of uh, Kogi State wixed him away from his residence. And you know because the, the, the sitting governor always has immunity, nothing could be done about that. And EFCC and a lot of people are saying that that's an obstruction of justice, that uh, they should allow EFCC go ahead to do what they need to do. Um, because to do what they need to do. Um, because in situations like that, when people and individuals continue to use TOGS to prevent EFCC from actually carrying out their duties, it, uh, it brings about chaos in the society and a breakdown of law and order. Uh, they said he came mm. in about 2.30. The EFCC had been there since 9.30. They exactly. came about 2.30 mm. and then the uh, he came that's the governor mm. so that means that, that's the amount of time it took him to drive from kogi to abuja yes. then came in with thugs and security so operatives and then mm. uh, after about two hours I mean, well, about 4 30 he now drove out yes they didn't say he had the governor they didn't know mm. he had the governor in the car but they were just you know, going on and on i watched the video it was it was really quick but the, about the, the matter has been but, but, arranged to uh, to, to, to today Yes, in court. But if he goes to court today, the EFCC will pick him up. Uh, well, let's see how. Let's, let's, see how let's, let's see how it goes. Let's go. Uh, let's yes, let's, yeah, yeah. let's, yeah. Sorry, yeah. let's yeah. move to Cardoso because I'm very interested in this story. Yes, so the CBN. Cardoso says yes, so. Yes, I mean, if Cardoso says so, <laughs> Cardoso, Cardoso will do so. <laughs> That's the news line. The CBN is said that the Cardoso, uh, the governor, Olayemi Cardoso, said yesterday that the CBN is not defending the Naira with our foreign reserves. He was speaking at the IMF. Um, World Bank in Washington, D.C. meetings or the spring meeting. Cardoso said, defending the Naira seems to be a prevalent theme that everybody's um, brandishing around. Let me be very clear. It is not our intention to defend the Naira. He acknowledged recent discussions on declining reserves, but argued that defending the Naira does not, it does not, does, uh, defending the Naira goes against our core philosophy. So what they are saying is that all they do is paying their debt, which they have been owing using the reserves. So we want a Naira that performs based on market forces as long as we have a vibrant foreign exchange market. It says also that um, they acknowledge that past reliance on broad decisions for education, um, health, um, um, payment purposes, essential. Was wrong. Uh, that, that was wrong. And that, they've shifted that now to the banks. And this, it, so the recent changes in our reserves are not for defending Naira, but for paying up obligations that were due. So we need to also ensure that people are putting the right narratives out there because the, the question, question I want to ask yeah. is even if they are defending the Naira, is it not their currency? Mm. Should we not defend it? Should we not stop the Naira from just scattering? Yeah, but, but that wasn't even what they are doing. The worry was yeah. like that could be artificial. Because yes, it's, it's not sustainable. Back. It's not mm. sustainable. So they're saying, listen, we're not going to pay, we're only doing. paying back our debt. Mm. We're paying back our debt. Yes, obviously it's strengthening the Naira, but yes. what, what is being said is that the Policy real defense changes. of the Naira is if we actually become more productive mm. and have more uh, sustainable policy changes for mm. our Naira. And get more oil um, revenue. Yeah. 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 yeah, because apparently uh, the last administration had taken out of, you know, had sold the oil in advance. So it's the extra that we are getting that we are yeah. that this administration yeah. is yeah. getting money from because that the other one has been it's sold. You should join. And the uh, so the for the future. You should not sell Nigeria share. Yeah, right. the major headline was talking about the violent ethnic um, agitationists. The president was receiving the Afeni Ferry. This is the pan, hands, Yoruba pans, Yoruba social group. What of those that came there is the um, non -generian. I had to go and Google what non generian is. non generian is somebody between 90 and 99. Pa Ruben Fashionotti, he is seen in the picture in the nation visiting the president amongst other dignitaries and members, leaders of the Afeni Ferry. And the president was talking tough, says that violent ethnic agitators are going to face the price. They will pay the price because 
for him what Nigeria needs now. Heavy price. Heavy, yes, yeah, heavy, heavy price. Yeah. So he he, 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 he told the administrator that they would um, they have recorded significant progress against insurgency, and um, they are, the the goal now is to protect the country. So those that are now trying to divide the country, they would collect. More importantly, I just feel like some people are sponsoring this division, and we as Nigerians collecting money from whoever to sponsor division and yeah. crisis within our community yeah. mm. is not patriotic, it is evil, mm. and beyond the law dealing with you, God will deal with you. Mm. And if yeah. you see something, say something. Mm. Don't be one that will sit down passively when you are hearing conversations that will bring, that would cause crisis within your country. We don't need this right now. Yeah, okay. so the list of yes, our the, yeah, the uh, Kibana chief priest has been granted 10 million Naira bill, yep. and then other celebrities have been Hailing him on his Instagram page, the video wrote, I no go see you for six months, K. Never. <laughs> uh, Obi Kubana said, This must be Abiodo Sheka. Abiodo Sheka. I don't know what that is. Yeah. And Owo PayPal says, Now, nah, who get money, they win case. No, there is no objection to it. All right. So, let's move on to the punch. Yeah. El Rufai marketers feel subsidy claims wrong, says federal government and NNPC. Heavy punishment of weight persons threatening Nigeria's unity says Tinubu. And tonight, Yoruba Nation agitators remanded or your demolishes base. APC drag Kano George before NJC over Ganduja's suspension. FG to execute $3.8 billion gas supply agreement in May. PDP governors warn against illegality as NEC meets today. Cardoso links depleting reserves to debt repayment. And policemen Kogi governor foil EFCC attempt to arrest Yahaya Bilu. Okay, which story are we starting with? Let's take one story. We're going to bring. I have a story inside the papers. Ah, uh, why? Yes, because this story is very close to home. Is what my staff are suffering. Army, uh, um, two army, army um, two soldiers have been detained. So they went into Dangote Refinery, driving an Akura. When they entered, they went to steal cables of 892 armored, um, 97 armored cables that had been cut to size from Dangote Refinery. They are currently within custody. This was not even rejected by the Army Public Relations. The, the, on Wednesday, the Director for Army Public Relations, Major General Unye Ma Unwa Chuku, um, described this as very, very regrettable, totally unacceptable. These two are already within custody. It is a, it's an act of criminality that could be prevented. It was provocative. And um, when we talk about stealing, Stealing cables, the impact is far reaching. So, this is within the Dangote refinery. Oyema said imagine? that those that were caught, mm -hmm. that they, they know that they are in trouble. He has excused himself and let the scene. The preliminary investigation revealed that the suspects were hired by a civilian contractor mm -hmm. who identified himself as Mr. Smart, who claimed to have wanted to recover his um, own, either those were his own products within the facility, but he could not go there. He now used army officials to go there then sometimes they now catch innocent civilians, which is where the issue that me I'm no. trying to resolve. Sometimes you catch innocent civilians without any evidence, and they are caught. But this one person was caught with evidence. Mm. Both the two soldiers and the Mr. Smart that financed the operation, mm. all of them should be brought to the table, and we should hear about the prosecution right. as a major headline, not inside the paper. Let's go on a short break now. When we come back, we continue with the review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. For an exclusive treat. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a... For 48 hour deep moisture, a fresh skin feel. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas. It shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw ether material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be.
So, make every morning count. Cup after cup. Morning after morning. Start strong. Finish strong. Nescafe. Stay with us. We're still reviewing punch. Uh, yes. Amaka, okay. Three. So um, the federal Nigeria currently imports all its methanol. So this is a great um, story. This this is progress. The gas supply and purchase agreement to support the final investment decision for the 3.8 billion brass methanol project is to be executed in May 2024. Um, the federal government just announced this on Monday. Uh, is a major, the brass methanol project is a major industrial project being built in Bayesta states. You know, um, it's also located on the brass island. The facility has a capacity of 10,000 tons of methanol per day when completed. And this is going to give about 15,000 jobs to unemployed people and, and people that want to like move um, to that space and that industry. The project, the project is a joint venture between GSV Engineering Limited. NNPC and the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board. So definitely, uh, I love um, the mm -hmm. Nigerian Monitoring and Content Board because it makes sure that Nigerians, that the jobs for Nigerians people, uh, for Nigerian people are meant for Nigerian people. The Minister of State Petroleum Resources announced the execution date for the gas supply agreement in Abuja on Wednesday after a meeting with key stakeholders of the project in his office. So this is a good one. Okay. Instead of what's important and important, because it will also help us strengthen our Naira. Yeah. If we can produce and manufacture more, Absolutely. why not? Yeah. Okay, very quickly. So the federal government, through its Ministry of Petroleum Resources, Nigerian National Petroleum Company, has said that various claims by different persons and groups, uh, the, and the allegation that the subsidy has been returned on, on fuel, that's um, the premium motor spirit, said that it is quite wrong and disheartening for these people to be saying this, that all they need to do right now is provide the evidence to justify the allegations, stressing that the president has declared the end of subsidy on petrol and it has remained so since his declaration. Uh, the Minister of State for Resources, of Petroleum Resources, Heineken, um, Lokbobiri, uh, stressed that the fuel subsidy was a sensitive issue, but noted that the government had made its position known from the matter and there is no subsidy being paid and whoever has any claims or allegations on such should provide the evidences so that we can discuss. But they are reassuring Nigerians that subsidy is not being paid in any way uh, in this country. So, any last story in point? Yeah, so the Oyo State Police Command have remanded, um, have arraigned the agitators for of the Yoruba Nation on Saturday. Um, they have demolished a building that belongs to... Um, Mudukbe Unitiri Abiola, they say that was where they were having their meetings. Yeah. So uh, they've uh, arranged all of them. But I think the most surprising was that most of these people were 75. There were five women, 75, 78, um, uh, Seven. 60, 64, and 58. There was only one young woman among she was 25. One of the women collapsed even once they said uh -huh. they were <laughs> they, are, they are keeping them there till August 2nd when they will start their trial. But a lot of the people were not even young people. They were not so uh, the about? men 55, 75. Why you just take over the building? Uh, I don't know. Why destroy? Why not take over the building and use it for, you know? I don't know why they are destroying the building. Why are they destroying? Everybody? Because there are so many homeless people. Let yeah, them... Let's use the building for... Ah, for homeless homeless what, are these, yeah. what are these old people looking for? Yeah. Look, exactly. How many years are they What trouble are they trying to lose? <laughs> it is like me going on struggle. the streets with... How many years of struggle do they plan to mm. begin to struggle? To struggle. <laughs> now, they are, they are reminding you you are fainting. How won't you faint? Let me move on to the <laughs> Daily Sun. APC rejects court order on the NDJ suspension. EFCC arraigns ex Kogi Governor Bello today. IPOP Kano gives conditions for his trial. OB condemns poor power situation. Ruga, Enugu farmer, petitions police over false alarm on a Greek PPP with government. 
Ohaneze to honor Ezive with Hero Award. PDP, we are aware of plots to destabilize parties, says governors. Okay, which story are we taking? Okay, so let's take uh, the Kano story. The detained leader of the pres uh, reproscribed indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, Nam the Kano, yesterday listed conditions to be met by the federal government before he would submit himself for trial in the treasonable felony charge preferred against him. Because I know they want to do um, an accelerated trial. Mm. So, um, but because they want to do an accelerated, accelerated trial, he's trying to give conditions that, number one, he wants to go back, um, he wants his bail conditions, you know, lifted. Yeah, to be lifted because he never abused, he never abused that privilege in the first place. Mm. So why did they just come, you know, and reverse that? And then secondly, he's saying that he also wants, because the law gives him the right to have limited access to his lawyers. So he's wondering, like, why are they not giving me um, access to my lawyers as and when I want it? So he wants that condition met too. And then um, he's also trying to say that he wants to be moved from the GSS custody to either a normal, whether it's a normal prison or whether it's house arrest to whichever one they want to, because some other people have enjoyed house detention or house arrest in the past. So why can't he um, enjoy some privilege after so long? And I think that they should really consider this, even though the courts are saying that, no, they don't want to go ahead to meet these conditions. But I think they should consider this because, because of the effect it's having in the southeast, especially with the sit at home on Mondays. You know, we're trying to strengthen the economy, and we cannot strengthen the economy when um, in the southeast they sit at home. We're losing money, losing revenue from productions, manufacturing, and actually from a thriving economy. So I think the government should try to um, create a balance in this um, IPOB and Kano situation. All right, so let me take the story of Hanez and Digbo uh, worldwide will confer former Anambra state governor, Chukwe Mika Ezefe, who will be buried tomorrow with the posthumous award of hero of Igbo land. The decision was taken at their meeting yesterday at the NEC, presided by the President General <coughs> of um, Hanez and Digbo, Emmanuel Nwanyawu, on saying that the former governor um, stood with the Igbos when it mattered the most and that he never equivocated on issues affecting Igbos. He all, therefore directed all organs and structures of the Ohanese and Igbo to participate fully at the various stages of the burial and funeral ceremony of Izife. Another story? Yes, there's a story. I was, when I saw it in the end, and I was trying to understand it after reading through, um, this Enugu farmer said that he has petitioned police for over false alarm on his agreed partnership with the government. Apparently, some a duo of um, investigators or writers, Simon Ede and Samuel Uguede, both of them had written articles about him saying that he is a northerner that is coming to do um, ranching in Enugu, that he has signed a partnership. Generally, just a lot of false claims said that all the people on his board were from the north. They were getting land from the state government. So he had to say that he is a, he's from, he's from Ugwe, um, Ugwe De. Ah, Jesus. That this is, is from Isiozu local government. And the land that was given to him, he's a native of that place. His name was Friday Naji. And that he converted to Islam in 1998 and changed his name to a Muslim name, and that the other people that were on the board of the company were all his wives, adopted children who were Muslim, so that it's the idea of saying that because his um, company, based on his CAC documents, all the names there mm. were not Igbo names, does not mean that he is the owner of the company yeah. and he is from that land. The controversy was born out of those two people doing their investigation and article, and they're trying to label the partnership as bringing in someone from the north to come and own land within the east, and then rear cattle within the east. He said he's not rearing cattle, he's just doing crops. Okay. And he has taken the case to court so that um, proper information is put out there, and this is just a way to um, alert the public that the information that those two people published was wrong. He also okay. accused them of cyberbullying and stalking because they were posting these things on Facebook and tagging him names that do not belong to him. Vanguard. CBN not using reserves to defend Naira, says Cardoso. Coalition threat, PDP governors move to avert implosion. Train 8, contract dispute threatens Nigeria and LNG expansion plans. Rising prices of foodstuff, FCC, FPC deploys operators to markets. Ganduja kicks as Kano court affirms its suspension. Yoruba nation or your government demolishes Onitiri Abiola's residence. Those threatening Nigeria's sovereignty have the price to pay, says Tinubu. Killings, Benue communities protest headsmen's attack, once grazing laws strictly enforced. Okay, which story in Vanguard, anybody? 
Uh, yeah. the, the Benue um, communities are protesting um, the recent killings uh, of some of their of their villagers in like three villages. Uh, in one village, ten people were killed. Oh, yeah, they total about twenty-eight, and they, so they came out yesterday to protest and that they want um, the anti-grazing law enforced. That until they enforce it, they, their their lives are at risk. That's just the crux of the story. Okay. So, the follow-up on Ganduje's story. Ganduje is being hit from different angles. This one is regarding the fact that he was suspended by his word. The Fed, a High Court, the Kanu High Court, has affirmed the suspension of the National Chairman, Dr. Abdullahi Ganduje. The High Court said that this was based on the Esparte motion that was filed against him. He said he should desist from presiding over the National Working Committee of the APC. Justice Naaba also held that and stopped the state's working committee of APC from interfering legally um, with the legally valid considered decision of the executives of Kanduje's word. So the, on the state level, the word had sacked this, um, the, uh, uh, Dr. Abdullahi Kanduje. The state's people now um, sacked the people that sacked him. Now they've gone to court. The court has said that these people had a meeting. Everything was done according to the law. He was legally sacked from, the, from his ward. So the state should stop um, interfering with what happened at the ward level, and uh, Dr. Abdullahi Ganduji himself should stop um, be presiding over the National Working Committee. I'm wondering which super, uh, super, um, um, the next level of court, maybe we will go to appeal before we get to Supreme on this matter, Supreme Court on this matter, but whichever way, let the rule of law be maintained in all that is being done within okay. the situation. Final paper for this one is the Nigerian Tribune. Kano High Court affirms Ganduji's suspension. Let's find a story we've not taken at all. Or your secretary at invasion, 78 year old man, 28 others arraigned for treasonable felony. Position of firearms. Uh, all set for PDP neck. Governors meet, speak on Damagum. Others. Timbu vows to deal with criminals threatening Nigerian sovereignty. I think we're taking all the stories yeah. in the papers. Okay, that's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, we bring in our guest co host today and, and start our next segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Courage is not the absolute. Hmm. So have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues. And last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind?
doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known, for when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Pioneer Positive Force member, dancing queen of the 80s, non-conformist, Afrobeat historian in her right, and long-standing member of the multiple award-winning all-female show, Your View, Omoyeni, Yeni, Anikula Kuti, aka Yay! YK Power! Ginger! Today, today we'll go here. Hey, hmm. I don't read you. Are you sure? Huh. Hmm. I know I'm not here to answer questions, I have to drink. <laughs> We're in trouble today. <laughs> ah. Wait, wait till your age. I was close now. Eh? I said 1975. He said 73. He said, said 75. But that's why I wasn't even born till 75. Damn. So will I drink out? Eh? You go drink out. <laughs> take, 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 make I go make I help you. Rush on, rush on, rush on. No be half. I uh, which half? <laughs> you will make me drink. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Light in in no. Nepa. Thanks for staying with us. We have a very special guest with us to join in the show. She's a Nigerian economist, a businesswoman, real estate expert, a philanthropist. She's the CEO of Life Card International Investments Limited, proprietor and founder of Life Card University, uh, an online school, and the Grace Ofre Foundation. Welcome with us, Grace Ofre Ibakumu, to the show. Thank Good you to so have you. You know, you are, we know you are also a pastor. <laughs> and you are, you are a woman of God. So we have our topic today. You're going to let you to break, break things to pieces for us. But first, we must celebrate um, a young man who is in New York right now trying to break the world record. Yeah. So a Nigerian chess master, coach, and founder of chess in slums, Africa, Mr. Tunde Onokoya, has begun an attempt to break the Guinness World Record mm. for the longest chess marathon in Times Square, New York. He targets 58 hours without losing a game. He started at 10 um, one and, one, and trying to raise $1 million. And um, so he started on the 17th of April and will end at 8 p.m. on the 19th of April. Oh my God. According to him, wow. he's doing this for the dreams of millions of children across Africa without access to education. So we're rooting for him. I don't know what you guys thought. You've seen the video going oh around. Yes. Oh. He's in the Times Square, in the middle of Times Square. Nigerians oh. all over who are living in New York era. I've been, I've been going, going there, there take pictures, pictures to encourage him. Okay. And if you are in New York, please stop by and say hello to him in, in Times Square. Yeah. Um, I, what I find mo most interesting is the initiative. So this is not someone who is just playing chess so that I become relevant. Mm. It was not a personal agenda. It is a means towards mm. an end. Um, he has done, he has trained many people, many children from slums on how to play chess and it has become a, an avenue for them to escape poverty, get education and with this um, move he's making, he'll be able to raise more funds to reach more people and be able to solve more problems. So, yeah, so this is not a person, just not I a person. Really the, the yes. guy Martinez that yes. he beats is really one, uh, of the one of the best. Chess, yeah. Yes, and then when I heard about this, I was on Times Square at this time for, you know, three days at a stretch. I was worried about the cold, you know, and I yeah, hope that, yeah, that, that he's in a warm space and that, um, you know, he's dressing, he's keeping yeah, warm yeah. and stuff, right? So he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't get it's sick. It's cold, yeah. yeah. Congratulations, Congratulations to him. And we, 
Definitely know that he's going to win mm -hmm. uh, because he's actually rooting for a good cause. You know, yeah. impact, life without impact is... So let's talk about impact. So now, now that we are, <laughs> we have you here, because it's not easy to, to grab you. Now that we have you today, we're going to try to squeeze as much wisdom from you. Because there's a lot of, we get messages a lot. Um, and a lot of women who are married, especially women who are religious women, I say Muslims and Christians, who are guided by faith and by, by their various religious principles. Um, many of them are crying in their homes for different reasons. One of the key reasons <clears throat> is they're having issues with parenting because both they and their spouses are from different parts of, uh, of different training, different backgrounds, and they're struggling with raising children together. Secondly, they're having issues with intimacy. Strong, because as I say, as Christians, you know, you, you expect that. At, see, Mike is still in the other room at over 60. <laughs> People expect that because you're, because you're a pastor. That you've, you've left the other room matters. You don't go to the other room again. That you, all you're doing is praying. People assume. Or something with the Holy Spirit. Because you are yes. always with the Holy Spirit. So yes. people like YK, they can their idea. But you, they expect that you're no more there. That you've left the other room. <laughs> thirdly, <laughs> thirdly, and more, probably most importantly, many women uh, have not been empowered because they sacrificed that for their marriage and to raise their children. Mm -hmm. And they feel today, they want to get out. But they are so used to you know, the home life. They're so used to being who they are. And they, they also want to feel fulfilled. So, they, I mean, I'm putting so many questions in one, but mm -hmm. let's start with parenting from two different worlds. What do you, how do you think we can begin to assist families who are being destroyed as regards parenting? They're they are from two different worlds and they're not able to agree. Mm. Okay, thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. I think I've been here many times. <laughs> but this one, I'm here for yes. something, something different. And I'm so excited when it comes to... I've been married for 21 years, one sitting. Mm. Do you know why I use one the word sitting. one sitting? The one sitting. Yeah. So I went to an event and they wanted somebody to come and pray. <laughs> and they said, if you have been married for 40 years, one sitting. It means <laughs> that you can be married... Uh, 40, 40 years, but it's like three cities. So you have married three different people. <laughs> so I've been married for 21 years, one city. I actually got into marriage pretty early at age 23. And I was glad I did. Um, for parenting, for me, it's first of all setting your value system. You see, the children learn more from uh, what you don't say, but what you do. I was shocked. I'm a Christian, and I just felt that I, I should live close to church. I had my reasons, maybe because then I was pretty poor. So I wanted to just live close to church so I can cut off transportation. Then I also wanted to be in church and come back home, but not too late because of the traffic. Yeah. But I didn't know I was doing anything important. But I just wanted to live close to church. So I'm talking about children watch what you do than what you say. So when my daughter went to Canada, when I visited her, I noticed that she was far from school. So I said, her, why didn't you get a house first? He said, no, but I'm two houses away from church. <laughs> and I, huh? So I said, mommy, all the while we are growing up, you live close to church. So I can go back to church in the evening, talk to first timers. I was shocked. Mm. Like, so it made sense to her that yes, you needed, and, and I never said, um, you have to live close to church. Yeah. So most times as parents, uh, bringing up these kids is 100% our responsibility. There was a time I was speaking to the Lord and I was asking God, uh, why do we even have kids? And he said, it's because when our lineage go, who will be the next person to carry on whatever in any, in any kind of religion? So that means your primary responsibility is to make sure that these kids are right. And that can help you as families to come together. Uh, you know, look at the kids as important. It will help, it will guide you on quarreling less, <laughs> shouting less. Uh, so when you truly know that God has given you responsibility, which are the kids, one thing you should do is should help you to build a home. Because they are going to also want to build a home. And whatever they see in their formation years, mm. that's what they will become. Right. They learn from what you are doing. Many kids are confused so, because of what is happening mm. in their home. Right. So I would say to parents, marriage is more than a relationship. 
it's it's a life mm. it involves you your children everybody the children and their friends in school so it's yeah. it's a it's a it's a nation it's actually the whole entire nation yeah. it comes from mm. that whole so whatever we are seeing now in a country it's from the whole okay so it's so important yeah. that once you're going into marriage or you're married forget every other thing know that you are representing a nation mm. and whatever you are is what we show outside so that should help you right. you know women but, but we have but we have um pastors that me, I've, I've learned to tell people to separate the man of God from the, the man. Like the anointing when he's on stage. Some people, when they climb on stage, they become this, the, the, this in Christendom. Holy Spirit takes over. When they are talking, it's not them. They become so charismatic, so energetic, you know. Some, it is very loving. The Holy Spirit just takes over. They are so kind. They are so sweet. But when they get home, they are snapping and all of that. So there's that... Um, they, they will now say, it's, this is my personality, but when I'm on stage, God just takes over my life. So how do you manage the fact that people have their own personality and then they get on, when they start, maybe even, even the same applies with, um, um, in the Muslim faith. When, when, you, when you start, when you submit yourself to that process of the religious exercise, you are no longer consciously the one practicing it. It becomes like something takes, takes over you. So... There can be difference where you are powerful on I, stage. I, I, I don't and think so. I don't think so. Man is a spirit. So if you live from within you out, your expression is who you are. Mm. I'll give you an example. I was going for a program with my kids and we entered into a car. And in the car, I didn't like the music that was playing because that's not what I want to hear. And I don't hear it anyway. So you can't differentiate altar from the house. That's the problem. You are you in the altar and you are you outside. That means it's pretense. Mm. That's what I'm trying to say. So I was in the car. They were playing nice music. I told the man, can you please off this music? I thank you because you want to entertain me because it's an Uber. I said, I don't want it. Then he went to news. I said, I don't really want to hear anything. I, can we just, because I don't want to hear, because I don't know what I'm going to be hearing from the news now. I have to keep guard my spirit with all diligence. Then he started to play music. This music was a Christian music that is not common. Mm. Listen, it wasn't common. So maybe from my own denomination, and those musics are not outside. Mm. So I stopped and I said, ah, this is nice. So at this music now everywhere. Then he kind of looked at me and said, I'm a member of my church. Christ I said, you are a member? He said, I mean, we like the church. The guy is a drummer in my church. <laughs> and I said, oh, I don't play those music. So just imagine, man, if I was a Christian in the church and I was yeah. whatever in his car, he, maybe he wanted to just even try. Mm. And the, when I heard the music, I said, no, 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 I don't want to hear that music because it's, when I leave, anything you hear, you carry Mm -hmm. So the words of those songs, I'm carrying them home in my subconsciousness because I'm a mind management person. So anything, you, you are your, li your life is your mind. So I didn't want to hear that. So what I'm saying is, you can't say spirit take over. Spirit take over every time. Mm -hmm. Let, so be attuned with the spirit 24 hours a day. Right. It keeps you on a check. And if you truly love, there are some things you wouldn't do. Mm. Every okay. religion is born of right. love. If you love, you won't beat your wife. Yeah. If you love, you won't. Even you are correcting the children, you are correcting them from a place of love, and they will know. Okay, okay. So you are talking about correcting children from a place of love, or your spouse from a place of love, in terms of parenting. So do you, as a Christian, as a pastor, even though you're, 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 you're enforcing, from what you're, from what I'm hearing from you, you're enforcing certain, you enforce certain things and principles in your home. You also encourage your children, excuse me, you also encourage your children to question certain principles that you enforce in your home in order to enable oh. them to be their own person. <laughs> I like this. So we correct things using the word of God. So nowadays the kids are very, the way they ask questions. My 12 years old, we ask you everything. You must show her why you want me to do this. Why do you even want me to pray? Why do you want me to go to church? So if you understand the scripture enough, you open it, let them read. If I want to correct my kids, I just look for the scripture that helps because I can't even correct them. I'm just a custodian. What do I know? So I give them the scripture. They read it. As I read it the second time, they read it. The third time, read it. Say, okay. What do you think? Oh, man, I'm sorry. 
End of story. I didn't say anything. <laughs> I just said read something. I didn't know. I'm sorry. Okay. Can you see that? He doesn't like it. This person we say is our God. Doesn't like this. I will do it again. Is it two different things? All right. There was a question I wanted to ask you because I know that we'll be discussing um, the religious part of it. And I'd like us to move to because I know you're also a business coach and you help people empower women. And um, the, the part of the conversation I'd like us to go into is women who feel disempowered in their marriages. You know, and um, especially women who are having issues with finances. Um, there are lots of women out there. They know from the information today, they know they've made a mistake. Mm. by choosing not to work. Mm. Although some people, me, I, I mean, I'm not against women that don't want to work. I believe that not working itself is work. But there are some women who send messages to our DM and say, I have made a mistake. I have lost 15 years of my life to raise my children. How do I pick up myself and start over? Mm. Did you make that mistake or were you always empowered from the beginning? Um, so, it's a value thing. I wasn't empowered from the beginning. Like, you all know my story. I, he had to go to find work um, we knew that it wasn't going to be enough so there's a discussion this will not be enough okay I'm not going out there's a fridge in the house so I put in water it becomes ice block and people come mommy I need I want to buy block then I also go and buy fairly used clothes from Katagua markets so honey you know that let me just sell to my neighbors then I sell to my neighbors. A good meal is prepared. How did it happen from the Okrika I sold? Looks nice. That means I have capacity. I'm proving it and I'm putting the value on the oh, table. Yes. Small, small. Then later I says, I can go out and do marketing. And I go out, I come back with like a million naira. But then I'm smart enough to know the work of a woman shouldn't suffer because you are working. So what do you do? I employ a house to not ask the man to pay. That's my job, to clean the house. So Africa says, so I have to pay the house up, yeah? If I decide to get a cook, I have to pay the cook. Because I've seen that if I spend my time six hours cooking, I can use six hours to make more money to pay the cook. It's just wisdom. So I introduced this gradually. Because my husband was this man that women don't work. So I started to show my value. He saw that I was helping him. Because woman is supposed to help. So it's not that sometimes you'll be surprised that these women also have been given opportunity, they blew it. Mm. So sometimes when you ask my husband, he will say, ah, I'm traveling, don't worry, my wife, don't worry. With my wife, everything is all right. It's, it's a heart of try me, try me, try me. And I discover that she has the capacity to do this. So today we are running the business. I'm the one running the business. It's just charming because he knows that everything that, he give, that comes to offering is multiplied. So are human beings. Human resources, managing people. So what these women, I know they spent 15 years. I think that was a choice. That's what I always say. If it was the man, what did you do to prove to the man that nothing will suffer? The kids will be fine. The food will come early. Everything will be fine. What I don't subscribe to is that if Africa says we are to cook, we are to do this, we are to do that, don't put that burden on the man because you now want to go and work. So I don't think that my husband knows how the cook is being paid, <laughs> how the cleaners are being paid, how the wash people are being paid. It's not his business. Why? That's my job. That's what my mother told me. Mm. <laughs> I found it. And we are fine. So it's for you to understand. That's what I think. And the Bible says, go and help. A woman is not supposed to. It's supposed to help. It's not helping with only kids. Not helping with only cooking. So I'm not the best cook. Let me also explain. That one is very controversial. We don't agree with you. No, yeah. when it was cook time. No, when it was cook time. I asked my husband a simple question. He said, no cook, nothing. I said, Oga, okay. you used to take me to Chinese restaurants. You take me to good restaurants. I said, why? He said, ah, because I said, what if you eat that kind of food every day? <laughs> I'm not the best cook in Nigeria. I don't know how to. Do you understand? I can know how to teach people business, expand women's capacity to become what they want to be. I cook, but does not mean that I'm the best cook. I was not trained to be a cook. So, honey, why don't we even set a table in the presence of the enemy every morning? <laughs> then you have varieties. I can only do one. But a cook can do like 16 things. And you go to the table, you're excited. Ah, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. Oh. So it's the way you work the things into it. And if really this person is serving better, the man, I don't think men are just wicked. Mm. Do you understand? It's the way we are able to package, you know, 
and let it be sensible enough. And he sees that it's an addition, All right. not a support. The reason why I want to, I'm trying to rush you a bit because we're going to go, we have topics to discuss as a group, but I'll do, I'll do that after the break. But the final question for you before, because I wanted to get some meat from you before we go into our conversation. Intimacy in marriage. Oh. People see you as a pastor and people assume that you have put that, you don't do that anymore. There's only people <laughs> like YK that still do it. <laughs> See, a man and a woman that is married, the intimacy is of God in any religion. Mm. Somebody must break the ice. Mm. Sometimes women just want to wait for the man to come. To come and say, I want... Huh? When the man is on the mountain, he does that. he's always, he's always on the mountain. No, no. When the man is on the mountain, you go to the down. mountain and scatter the whole mountain. <laughs> he's <laughs> allowed, Pastor. He's, yes, he's ah. okay. If my husband stays one. on the mountain for 31 days mm. and I want to have sex with him, I will get to the mountain. Martin, we are in the mountain together. So you are still exactly. active. Very active. Blood you have to. Ah. <laughs> She's only 44 now. Why would she ah. be active? <laughs> very active. Very active, mommy. I'm very, very active. Are you serious? And, uh, so and I can also As a pastor. Huh? Mm. Yeah. Pastor Grace. It's important. Pastor Grace. Wow. Yes. Because... So you wear the lingerie, yeah, everything to get yes, to you bed. Can't, you can't be, begin to fool yourself. Aww. Like they don't... That's so there's no Facebook, there's nothing. Mm. And you're not seeing everything everybody's wearing. Yes. Some of us are losing weight because of the men. Yeah. We have to look good. Yeah. And <laughs> sexy too. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, so and uh, you, know. you have to... You also get to the highest level of the sex because... Mm. There's nothing you should lose because the things that are that finish everything. That, 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 that are, finish that, everything. Yeah. The moral leaves. Even if you just finish everything. Finish it. Finish everything. There's yeah. nothing that cannot be done. It's my hey, house. Are you saying Jesus Christ? Hey, hey, no, no. no. But he he finish finish everything. I've not lost that one, no. And he says we should go and multiply and have sex. So we have to do what he has said. We should do. We finish everything. Finish it. Hey. Yes. Okay, I think thing. on that note, I'll <laughs> take a break. I'll come back with <laughs> a different topic. That's what I'm carrying. Finish everything. That's what I'm You're writing it now. Finish everything. Husband, <laughs> husband, where, the, where are thou? Finish, finish everything. everything. <laughs> okay. Let's go to a break. Why can't you? don't have any questions <laughs> No, not particularly. <laughs> 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 why can't motivate us on this thing? Because she keeps us grounded. Because uh -uh. anytime, anytime I'm feeling like I'm tired, I said, why can't you doing this thing? Just... But you arise. know what she said? She's 44. Arise. She's 44. Why would she not? <laughs> so she has even motivated us. Let's, let's go on a short break. When we come back, we now have our topic, our Thursday topic for the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Hey, I actually came to pay the money for the recruitment consultancy you did for my company. Beautiful. Uh, I took two million. I just hold on. <laughs> I now collect dollars. What? Yes. I don't understand what's happening to Naira these days. So, so it's going to be two million times today's exchange rate. Hey, 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 doctor, wait, wait. Do hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're on to something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, 
some very deep topical issues. And last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have Made Kuti <laughs> in the view. <laughs> <laughs> it's still 7 of 7 and we've been doing a whole lot of protesting, protesting. The only thing that remains is just to carry placard. It's about 5 of 7 to be honest because, ask your question, I have so much to speak about once we finish. We will not give you the time because it's 7 of 7. I will make the time <laughs> now. He said he will not ask questions about science. No, 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 I'm based on... He asked a question that was subjective <laughs> about high life mm. and he did not finalize his answer about a kuti question where there are only three of us. Editor, scratch this part out. That could out. have possibly <laughs> composed the music. Editor, scratch this part out. Stupidity <laughs> is an act of ignorance. Oh hey God, my dear. Was composed... By which kuti? Femi kuti. Is that your father God, I'm Shimon kuti. No, wait, wait, Femi kuti. You said Femi kuti. kuti. Wait, wait, wait. You can't be allowed. No, no you've you not can't asked me anything. Everyone. You've not asked me anything. We, we, uh, so my final answer. No. <laughs> All I have to say is yeah. this show is. It's really about drinking. Yeah, that's the whole idea. The questions don't matter. <laughs> that's the whole Just idea. Justice is out the window. <laughs> we throw questions. We have no morals right here. On the seven of seven. For staying with us. So there's a tweet that was sent to us, um, women collecting gifts, um, especially for those women who are out there, the lots of um, celebrities, known faces, even women who are top um, executives in banks or um, they are working in oil and gas, you know, law firms, you know, all these top women who are married get gifts. Ah, I like the way you look at it. Send me a account number. Let me send you something, you know. So men, some men are now protesting and are requesting for the bank statements of their wives. They want to see who is sending them money. They want to monitor the kinds of um, people who are sending them gifts. What are your thoughts on this? Because many men are getting scared of the fact that women out there today seem to, become, seem to be normalizing, receiving gifts for men, because back in the day, you if you want to offer a woman a gift, she wouldn't take it. Once you're a man, I beg, please, don't, 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 I don't want to hala. Well, lots of women are collecting gifts today. What are your thoughts on this? The fact that men are complaining, because today we're talking to men. Men are complaining that their wives are collecting gifts from strangers. Their wives are talking to their gym instructors who are massaging them during gym hours. Men, their wives are having male friends. And you talk to women, women are saying, these are just my friends. They just admire me and there's nothing in it. 
What are your thoughts on this? Let me, they can call us on 081-0764-1679-090-241-63440. You can also tweet to us at TV Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. I'm going to start with YK because YK, have you received gifts from people aside <laughs> on Uncle Tio? Ah, on Sunday, someone came to the shrine. Um, and he, he has a very sad story. Very, very sad story. And I'd heard it. I'd watched it on... Uh, social media and everything. Uh, so I reacted. Oh, how sad. And you know, he came with his son and I reacted. Then I gave him my phone number that like, anytime you want to come and talk about it on the show or you feel you can talk about it, please come, you know. And I left it. Um, so he now sends me a text later. But I look, oh, I love the way you reacted to me. I love, you were so kind. You were so this, 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 this. I want to send you money every month. Oh. Send me your account number. I said, of course not. I, I, I. He said, please don't reject me. Please. And I said, I, don't, I didn't do it because I yeah. wanted your money. Yeah. Or I wanted anything from you. I did it because it's a genuinely yeah. sad story. You know, and I feel he needs justice. You know, he said, no. Ah. So in the end, I sent it. Honestly, he sent me money. Wow. And he said he's going to be sending me on that same date every month. I said, wow. You declared to Uncle Tio. I'm declaring it in public. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's the question. When you get this gift, you declare. Yeah. You declare. So, okay, so I was supposed to declare. Uh, me, I declare, Sha. I think you should. Mm. I think you should because um, there is nothing hidden under the sun. They and that's that. the truth. So if they, they find out... In future. Ah, in future. Why did you hide it? Mm -hmm. ah, you... I, think, I think I declare my own by, by putting it out there. For example, like maybe Valentine's Day, my birthday, I receive gifts from different people, admirers and stuff. Like this Valentine, I came into my office. Gifts. I, saw I came into my office and it was a crazy house. Do you understand? Flowers, things from every... Some people I don't even know. Yeah, and then, babe now. And then, <laughs> and then I, put, I do a video and I put it out there. So for whoever, you know, would know that, so, I'm declared. That's enough declaration. I'm not hiding anything, right? I remember when I used to get Valentine gift from every from men. They didn't like it at all. Uh -huh. He did not like it. So I stopped. You stopped collecting or stopped declaring? What's your what's husband? Doesn't I stopped receiving. I stopped receiving. <laughs> okay. okay. What okay. your what your spouse do not know it doesn't hurt mm. him. So some women choose not to to, to declare. Is that wrong? <sighs> Let me come to you, Tokwe. Okay. So um, for me, I what I what I've learned is. My husband is not bothered about me getting gifts. gifts. Actually, as I am declaring 10%, <laughs> he will collect his 10%. He will say, the reason they are admiring you is because I am taking good care of you. Anybody that sends you gifts owes me at the same time. So um, because I understand him and our friends, there is no need to hide. But I have seen situations and I have heard from friends that just the fact that even when a female colleague gives a gift, <laughs> the man would make, it would, make it would make a fuss over the fact that it is not a female colleague. It must be a man. A man would have given... You know, you know the way we get gifts amongst yeah. ourselves here? Yeah. Atiyani would give me perfume, somebody would give me earrings. As in, even among ourselves here, we get a lot of gifts. Mm. If you are married to someone who is so uncomfortable, the person will say she's lying that... The person was telling, like, I, it's a true life story. I know the person. The man always accused the woman of infidelity, that every gift was from um, a man. And so even, so she stopped declaring. So sometimes it is based on the reality on ground that will teach you what to do and how to relate with this person. His heart cannot take it. His insecurities are on the high side. So because you know that the man cannot handle knowing that there are some other people that are admiring you enough to cherish you or give you that gift, you better manage his ego and not declare. But if it's someone that can handle it, then you can declare. Okay, so okay. I, I think that it's going to lead to so many things. That story mm. might will lead to the end of this marriage. So mm. the person should, if you have this kind of situation, uh, every man needs a father or a mentor. That's my, because insecurity is something you should address. Because after with you, it will still happen to the children. Mm. So it's too much to take. Mm. So how do you address a man that has insecurity? That's a very good I think you, it's something you should think about. Bring people that can address it to help. Because if, if a man is insecure, that's why you can see the woman hiding, like you said.
If the man is secured, then it's not a problem because that insecurity will make the woman hide it. We now make the woman cheat. Exactly. Because the more she's hiding it, the more the people giving the gift might now come to see that they're hiding it. Because if your husband's friend gives you a gift and you can't tell the husband, that means the friend will notice that your husband did not say thank you for what you mm. gave my wife. He will give you more if he has motive and it can really lead to the man finally receiving what we are crying about. Exactly. So I think to solve that is that if you have a man that has insecurity, like the person tweeting it, you know, before you treat this kind of a thing, if you have insecurity, there are solutions to a man that has insecurity. The foundation is good for us, first of all, meant the foundation, so we don't put so many things on top. That's not what we are talking about, but I think that the, the woman should help the man to address it, look for a solution. There's a solution for everything. But for me, I receive a lot of gifts, and I will tell you the truth. Some I remember to say, some I don't remember to say, because it's not a big deal. But what I just do is that I could come have a foundation. So if you want to give me anything, send it to the foundation account. Mm -hmm. So I've used that one to just to cover, to so protect yourself. Even on social media, even women, anybody that wants to give me anything, I will just tell them, hey, Joe, um, speak. Give them foundation account because there's so much money I even need to do a lot of things in the foundation. Mm -hmm. So I will channel it to the foundation. foundation. Yeah. But if it's something I have to take home or something, if I get to my just dream, ah, but how many people like can I even explain? Yeah. Especially when there are too many human beings that the man doesn't just know. But there are women who are forced to manage insecure husbands. So for example, there was time I hung out with somebody where uh, we were hanging out at night and she was taking pictures and sending as evidence mm. that I'm with my girls who because she's managing her insecure. So we are here you say that there's there, there's a, way there's to a solve solution. Her, but some women are not able to find that solution. That's why I just be taking pictures or just constantly con disclosure, full my, disclosure, my, my and with dear, a marker or take this. Dear, how long will you continue to take picture? You see, this marriage is a marriage of 50 years. Of I'm 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 he puts a string. No, she, she, she's in a relationship. In a relationship. In a partnership. Okay. In a partnership. <laughs> yes, it's even partnership. Mm. Sometimes you can even be in partnership for 15 years. Mm. Yeah. How long will you continue? Ours is just 17 years. Mm -hmm. 17 years, eh? Wow. How long will you continue? It's a long time. It, it puts it's a, a strain. Time. It puts a strain it puts on you. It puts no enjoyment. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. It puts a strain, on you, a strain on you as an individual, like having to go out and then you have to keep sending evidence and explaining yourself and your the person is not letting you even enjoy the company of your friends even mm. have a good time try to keep a marriage and at some point you, you know but at some point you start getting resentful mm. do you understand and when resent when resentment starts creeping into your relationship then things start breaking down automatically that's the truth let me take Yakub. good morning Yakub. thanks for calling your live hello Yakub. uh good morning can you hear me yes yeah, thank you very much. I, I think for me, this is my own personal opinion. Uh, for me, I think uh, the woman should know who her husband is. That is the uh, first line of action. You should know who your husband is. If it is somebody that feels insecure, you, you should not go ahead and de declare everything that you got from anybody, either men or women or whoever. Because I, 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 an insecure man, whatever you declare to him, he will, he will quickly judge it that this thing, even if the, the gift comes from your colleagues, as a woman, he will quickly judge it that this must be coming from a, a man. Are you getting it now? And then, man, and then we men, typically for me, we, we don't bother of what we don't know. Do you get it? What we don't know at all, it does not bother us. And then let me give you a typical example quickly. Man will begin to suspect when you have a woman at home. First and foremost, she password her phone. Anytime, maybe she's in the kitchen, the phone, the phone rang in the sitting room. She quickly left the kitchen, come into the sitting room, pick the phone, and then go back to the uh, uh, sitting room. I mean, the kitchen. So you have been asked the how was the thing from the kitchen. You did not have anything. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, so go if man, if, if man, if man see his wife starting. That's what the phone, and then when the phone rang, she took the call, she took the go go to the room and all those things. So the man will be saying that these people that these people that are calling this woman, who are they? Do you get what I'm saying? So right. the woman will be suspicious that, that is this gift, all this gift is coming from man and all these things. Thank you. So what are women giving your husband gifts? So if my if my um my partner tells me like if if he receives a gift and he tells me, oh well and good, right? If he forgets to tell me, oh, well, I'm good. If I see something with him and I say, oh, babes, like, 
oh, this is nice. And he says, oh, someone gave it to me. Oh, we gave it to you. It doesn't, it's, I'm not fussy about certain things. I'm only fussy when an issue crops up or something gives me concern. Mm. I'm not fussy. Someone gives you, gives it, oh, well, I'm good. Oh, wow, and that's because nice. You're, 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 you're secure in yourself. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, that what, what um, um, Mrs. Grace was talking about uh, concerning how dealing with insecure, uh, how to deal with insecure, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's like you're taking care of a baby. It's a major mm. burden. Stressful. I feel, I feel, mm. and there are insecure women too. Let's just, let's just call out this thing on both sides because there are women that they will be looking for what is not lost in their husband's phone. Mm. Major insecurity. Mm -hmm. They are um, similarly men looking for, uh, looking for what is not lost in your wife's phone. Mm. I hear, um, I hear uh, our last caller, and I understand the fact that, oh, maybe she's behaving suspicious. But what is suspicious? Somebody simply doing, like, like you being yourself for an insecure person can be suspicious. You just, the fact that you dress up, you are looking very fine that day, mm -hmm. can become a suspicious thing. The person can look at you and say that, ah, you are looking very fine today. Are you going to go and meet somebody? Because the person already has the root of insecurity. So they'll, be, they'll find suspicion where there isn't any suspicion. It is a tough place to be in and Let it's difficult this to manage. I'll come to you, Waiki. I did from London. Thanks for calling you alive. I did your live. Uh, yes, can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead, I, please. I have a, Yes, I have a different opinion, okay. which I know might not, uh, you, might not, you may not like it, but <laughs> for me, my view is that once you are married as a woman, don't have any friends. Let your friend be in your association, which means in the church. Hmm? When it's not. I, can't, I need the volume, I can hardly hear you. Friend. When you are married, you shouldn't have any friends. I can't hear you. When you are married, as a married woman, let your friend be in the church. Don't have any friend outside your church well, as a woman. So that you your husband can monitor everything. That is, that is the best thing. Adia, please let me ask you a question. question. Adia, please let me ask you a question. You know, sometimes in the church, okay. women have affairs with their congregation. <laughs> pastors. So that's your friend that is in the church. If you're having an affair with that person in the church, you know? okay. Now, now, let me tell you, the reason I'm mentioning it is this. If your wife has a friend in the church, if anything wants to go wrong, she knows the result. Mm. That is hellfire. Because you preach every day here, <laughs> the result. So, that's why it's important. But if you have outside oh, friends, they are can influence you. So, me, I don't support it. Yeah, why yeah, is it no, you thank you for your concern. Uh -huh. Ah, wow. Please, I think I didn't hear something right. Where does this stay again? In no, Nigeria, okay. UK, or the village? Where UK. <laughs> UK. People yeah. see that beauty. You can Whoa. say people are Man different. Out of yes. UK. You can say it. But you see, somebody, I just got a message. He says, my wife is cheating on me. Oh. I know. I don't have evidence, but I'm suspecting her. She gets gifts all the time. And she has, she takes late night chats, video calls. I've tried to confront her confront her but she has denied but i know in my heart that she's cheating on me oh sad so this man is you see there are women women are doing things are, but, you don't, but you don't have women evidence are, you can't yeah, you can't but, say you can't accuse but you anybody see, of women are is, women are mentality. able to they, they, they find a way to handle this thing women in the way people. that men don't yeah, yeah he's suspecting but it's possible that he's just having he's being insecure mm. Mm. Maybe I don't know the background. What of kind of insecurity is that? Where, yeah, why evidence. are you receiving video call or different gifts and midnight Check video call? Hey, why? So, so, so let me also. You are inappropriate. So, who is, who is, who is marrying this? So let us, let us let us now no, draw no, the line. What no. is inappropriate? And what yeah, is not yeah. appropriate. It's, it's not. not. Let us define it. No. What is that? What is let inappropriate? Let me tell you something. Eh? Let me tell you the truth. Mm. It does not make sense. You either you either married or unmarried. Mm. There are no two ways about it. If you have decided to be married, you should be sensible enough to allow the man to be comfortable. Why video call? Okay, if you are really video calling your brother or your uncle or whoever, then put it in front of everybody now. So if you are trying to deny, the, the man that is even talking, I'm talking about those men who are suffering in the dark. Mm. They, are, they, are, they, are, they are having issues in their marriages mm. and they don't have anybody to talk to. And it is... This midnight calls. Hey, not them going. Now, hey, which midnight call are you having? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I know about my brother. No, but my brother. No, it's not right. No, no it's not right. If you are married and your husband is there, mm. 
Mm. I don't understand. That's disrespectful. Even if it is a woman, right? Now yeah, you are calling. Now. That is calling you at midnight. Have you and that woman have something. No, no, that's not true. You know why? Yeah, why? I, my, have a, my siblings uh, stay. They don't stay in Nigeria. It right? doesn't matter. No, I'm from it. I'm from it. And I have my friends that that don't live in the country, right? So I only talk to them very late at night. Yeah. Right? Are you married? No, I might be and in a partner. partnership or relationship. You don't know. You never know, right? <laughs> so yeah. So, but so, but. If I'm talking to that person, to whoever it is, yeah. and maybe I'm, I'm, a call is coming in that late at Time night, yeah. some might say, who are you talking to at that time of the night, and right? I'm, that, and then if I, if I, if I say, oh, I'm talking to so so person, you might feel that it's a reoccurring stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Or I might be talking to my sister. If my sister, I might talk to my sister and her husband is there, and most of the time, I'm naked and I'm trying to do my makeup. So and she I'm, can't I'm in the show your she face. She can't show my face because I'm naked mm -hmm. or stuff, and I'm talking to her because we're just on the phone. So mm -hmm. there might be a reason why. But for me, if you're in a partnership or relationship, or marriage, and you have doubts, or oh, this person is always on the phone, midnight call, ask questions, yes. make clarifications, yes. don't make assumptions. Is that uh, simple? Uh, uh, what, what I'm saying is, if you are with your sister or your friend mm. at midnight mm. on the phone, because it is 6 p.m. Yes. there, yeah. you will not hide it from your husband. You I'm will saying. put the phone you there, you will have the call. You will not, you, matter of fact, you will put a, what what was some conversation you want to, yes. yeah, gossip. Yeah, some gossip want to, if nobody wants to gossip about the man. I wouldn't want you to hear it. Because half of the time we're gossiping about the men. <laughs> okay, the so reality. So after the gossip, uh -huh. after the gossip, uh -huh. the gossip is over. Uh -huh. You can say, can you just say hello to Moses? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Every time, so, every time, every day. I talk no. to Moses every day. That means you are managing the person's diary. Let me so ask the Good question. morning, you're live. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Yeah. This yes, is engineer. Morning, I greet you. Yes, I greet everybody. <laughs> engineer Apolabi, I'm yes, calling from Sambu. I think the issue you are discussing is, is common to every home. I mm -hmm. think the matter remains that all married couples must know when and what to do at certain times. For example, as a man, no man would like to have uh, his time to be taken by others, whether by, by making calls like me. I am um, comfortable only when my wife con 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 concentrates on me mm. in, in discussion, in communications, than when my wife now starts to be communicating with somebody else whom I don't even know. Maybe even though I know that person, but at the same time, she must acknowledge that, yes, I am more special than whoever. The, 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 the fact we made that the specialty aspect of having both the, the wife and the, and the husband must take themselves as a special person from others. That is the truth. When you, when you abide by those lines, you will know that they, they will be peace in that home. Thank because you very much, Angela Kolabi. Thank you very much, Afama. You see, there's a, there's a bigger issue I think we're missing here, which I would mm. like us to... Before you go to that bigger issue, I need to ask you a question. All of the women on this table, if it is your husband that is receiving midnight calls... Let's tell ourselves the truth now. You know, but... What? Eh? How will you react? You just say, oh, it's not normal. It's because it's your brother in America calling you and you are going to the other room or your sister in America. All of us here... Will you accept it? <laughs> yes or no? That's all. <laughs> Only yes or no question. Yeah. Answer. I don't no, need expectation. Yes or no? If your husband is the person that is receiving me that call, Let me from answer. who he says it's his brother or his Let sister or his auntie or Let his Let me own. answer. If yes or no? I won't have a problem with that. If no, okay. Wait, your husband no, really knows. Wait, yes. Let me explain why. Right? I won't have a problem with that if I ask you. And you give me an explanation. That explanation might be a lie, you. Mm. Do you understand? But if I, I but say something, that's respect. That's being courteous. Say so if we're lying down on the Every same night. bed. If we're, if we're lying down on the same bed, right? And you get to, your phone rings and you get up to, you say, you, you, and you get up and you say, babes, excuse me, I don't want to disturb your sleep. I don't want to disturb you. I need to take this call. Mm. Or, you know, I need to discuss. You see, it's not a prison. I need to give you space too and trust the fact that. You're every not night, around. he does it every night for one month. Hey, let me just talk about Chief Kalu. <laughs> good morning, Chief Kalu. You're live. You can't accept it. Morning. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, actually, I want to tell everybody in the house that don't collect tickets from any man. An outsider. That's what they're coming in. Ninety-nine percent, genuinely, for now, people are not real. 
people use it spiritually. They will collect, they will give you a gift, they will target in your person. 100% of younger generation are giving gifts. Spiritually, either they go somewhere, they plan to make so much money. When you collect the gift, you have collected the loss of your husband. I didn't hear him say Chief so saying that people are, people are targeting something else. And it's something I grew up with. I, I grew up hearing the idea that once a man gives you something, he will be expecting something else in return. It was, a, it was a mindset that was used to keep us chased and not collect anything from anybody. Because once you, you, you've already entered a transaction, if you, are, if you have collected something, it means that there must Should be I a... Should I sing this song? Eh, what it's is this song? song? Chewing gum, sweet, na la poto maaka. Now nah, there they Anthony. Uh, Maybe you said that if you take sweet or drink <laughs> from a guy that is going to make you, you're going to be on Anthony's bed. Oh. And you not take any gifts. Uh, hey, Somebody has a question for you. That was the mindset we were brought up with. But let I've grown in life to realize that these things don't necessarily have to follow <laughs> anything. Like it might not be it's not about the body. People like I did I, we did a training in my office, and after the training. People that attended the training, they paid for the training, you know, you. gave me gifts that, oh, they were really grateful. They, their eyes have opened so much. They feel so courageous. I go for me, trainings. Most of my mentors, they are men in the real estate industry. I give them gifts. So if they, are, if they now have insecure wives, they'll not be like, ah, why is Temo always giving? <laughs> By one of my mentors, as in, uh, if he enters Nigeria today, Wangara, I will send um, um, guinea fowl and meat to him immediately. <laughs> I, I, I sent to her too. I'm like, so imagine his wife is now feeling there's something. I can never ever have anything to like. I'm very happy in my marriage, but this is a man that has helped me in real estate. It's impossible for him to enter this country and I will not give a gift. Yeah. So if you are now on that receiving end, what he's giving me is not relation, it's not a it's not, um, it, 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 it's not it's intangible. It's the advice, it's the counsel, it's the motivation and inspiration when I need it. Mm. So I'm actually getting something. There's transaction taking place, yeah. but it is not about my body. Please, exactly. I have a question here from Moses Ade. He says, Adiani Kuti, let me help you refine that question. <laughs> if their son said his wife is receiving late night calls, <laughs> how would they feel? <laughs> so I let, me, let me refine the question according to Moses Ade. <laughs> if it is your son, son. that his wife that is receiving late night I would tend to ask her. Everything, uh, everything starts and ends with a conversation. conversation. And that's why we're here. We are conversing. Yeah. Have a conversation. Once you communicate yeah. and, the com 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 and what you've discussed is that it's somebody that we both agree on, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. But you see, the bigger issue that we have, we have, we have failed to even talk about, because the reason why there's suspicion mm -hmm. is the issue of fear of cheating. Mm -hmm. Husband is afraid that his wife might be cheating. Wife is afraid that husband might be cheating both ways. And the bigger question, because I was looking at the message that I got from uh, Mariam was sending a message about a missing German billionaire hmm. who was declared dead is reportedly living with his mistress in Russia. My God. Oh, Six so years my after God. his mysterious disappearance in my Switzerland, God. a German billionaire, Karl Erevan, has been reportedly found living with his Russian mistress in Moscow. Now, the question is, when... You feel more comfortable. Wait, 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 no, when, you, when you're feeling inadequate or you feel that this marriage is longer, longer working, why are we not encouraging people to leave? Exactly. This man had to pretend or fake his death to just run to away, escape. just to escape. Uh, what? He didn't want to share the money. Yeah, no one to share. Well, he had the money, he had the money. Yeah. If the reason why you are scared is because there are issues in your marriage. Maybe you, the wife and both of you don't trust each other. If I don't trust you, you don't trust me. Why are we staying together? Why is society forcing us to just stick there? Mm -hmm. So you are afraid she's leaving and she's leaving. But there's a possibility that some women are cheating. There's a possibility that some men are cheating. Why do they choose to cheat? Why don't they just dissolve the marriage? Why is it so difficult for us to just walk away? And be happy. In, in this side of the world, it is not an easy thing to do because they are, everybody, you're, you're not, your marriage is not your marriage. Mm. <laughs> uh, not yours. Is no, really. Even your, your marriage. Your, your marriage is your parents' pride. My son is married. My daughter is married. Your marriage is community because your marriage <laughs> benefits more than just you. Mm. Your marriage isn't, is your, maybe you are, oh, you're just, you. it's not just about you. you there are children, parents, 
siblings, family members church. who felt like you have already... Church, everybody is taking pride in your marriage. Our members have had good marriages. This church rarely has divorce. So no, your marriage is not about online you. Online members. In <laughs> in-laws. <laughs> online members, everybody is looking at you. So you, sometimes you are thinking about your marriage and wondering, ha, how would those people that have been saying on Instagram yes. that 20 years... Look at what happened with AY. AY's marriage and the challenges they are facing is not about them. Instagram, uh, in-laws, <laughs> family, everybody is commenting. They've turned them so into that, people, marriage. people marriage. People do. People struggle with how to deal with the aftermath of that breakup. Because it is so hey, I complex. Don't, I don't think that this is a topic that can end in a year. <laughs> what I just feel is, mm. from the beginning, mm. do you understand? If you cannot really endure, don't even bother. Many people are not married and they are happy. They are adopted children. They are doing so. If you really want to marry, know that marriage comes with a lot of challenges, yeah? But then, like she said, communication. Mm. One of the Let things. Let me pause you for a quick second. I want, to, I want to pause you. I'll come yeah. back to you. Aliu has been holding for a while. Aliu, thanks for calling. You're live. Yeah, good morning. Good everybody. morning, Aliu. I'm Umar Aliu. Um, Put our cuts. Go ahead. I'm a Muslim by religion and I marry a Christian. Okay. <gasps> Yes, it's, it's funny, but it's true, it's great. Okay. I waited there in the church. I still go to my Muslim, I do my Muslim prayer, she goes to church. Okay. From some days too, she goes with the children to church, it's not my problem. They go to mock too on Friday, if they are around. So, the issue people are discussing, since I got married to her, she's from a private woman from Kaduna State. Since I got married to her, before I knew her six years, even before we got married, I don't see any gift in her birthday. For me too, nobody gives me gifts. Okay. So even though you give me gifts, sometimes me, I don't take it to the house, maybe I touch it out. Okay. Because we've been living like that, so those things are not issues. Issue of night calls, yes. I receive night calls a lot, sometimes. And uh, she's not too happy about it. So the best thing for me is to stop it. So that that peace should be there. And we'll be living over night 20 years Night calls from now. women? So, 20 years. Night calls from women, yes. Really? I night calls. Why are you taking night calls yes. from women? So I stop it. I have to be very honest. <laughs> what do you guys it's talk about at night? Mm -hmm. Yes, night calls. Sometimes there are people that work with me. I work offshore. I work on land. I'm a rig worker, so okay. I receive calls okay. from people. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, some, some of them are business advocates, but she doesn't like it because she suspects this or that. So the best thing for me is to stop it. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So exactly. That. Thank you very much, Ali. I love what he said, that if you find your, if you are doing something and your spouse does not like stop it, it. you will stop it stop because it. you love yes. your partner. Um, but very few people are willing, and then so it, except it is something like it's this is everything I'm doing. I'm having to stop my life because I want to keep this marriage. But so there's going. something about excitement. Can I ask that, you this question? There's, there's, like, there's something about excitement. Mm -hmm. So you're married to somebody, and both of you are good people. I mean, I was watching a series yesterday, <clears throat> Midsummer something. Couple married 30 years, they're happy, and they've been happy. They have their kids are grown. And the woman is in her 50s, I mean, she's in her 60s, mm. and she asked her husband for a divorce. She's just done. Mm. Because there was huh? no excitement. They she okay, felt so that the world, like, she wants to divorce because she, just, she, she was done with all the mommy, daddy, children, raising family. Yeah. So she wanted she want? some excitement. She wanted to travel around the world. So to can't fly, you travel together? To, no, I guess the man is not that kind of a person. And he, she, he, he has grown up to be a man who likes to buy, be a homely man. He wants to just be himself. But she wants to live. She wants to go bungee jumping. She wants to fly, swim in this ocean. She wants to do stuff. And he's been holding her for years. And she has accepted as a loyal wife. As a humble wife, as a submitted, a submissive, submissive wife, wife, she has stayed with her husband. Though they've now raised the children, she's like, okay, I finished submission. <laughs> I have uh, raised children with you. I've done everything. Now I want to live. Why is sixty? The lot of sixty year old. Sixty is a new forty. She looks forty. She looks thirty five. <laughs> so at this age, like you know what? I'm done. I want to go live. Mm -hmm. So why why is it difficult for us in Africa to allow these sixty year old women who want to live live? Why will you make it look as if you cannot? You have to stay to 80 and just be with this man that somewhat caged you from your entire life. Okay, so I, in this life, I believe that I came into this world as Amaka or Akwe. <laughs> and when I'm going, I'm going alone. I don't think that if tomorrow I get married, 
and then I, uh, uh, it's time for me to go, that the man is going to jump inside the grave and say, we die together, or take poison and follow me. Do you understand? Romeo and Juliet, now Romeo and Juliet. The reality is this, right? If you don't love yourself, if you're not happy with yourself, you can't give it to another person. And if, and people need to realize that people keep evolving. That's why we're humans. Mm -hmm. What makes me happy today might not make me happy tomorrow. tomorrow. And that life comes with no guarantees whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And that you should be able to love yourself in, in, in such a way that you're able to um, find happiness over and over and over again, right? Because this life is once. There's no rehearsal. You're not, there's no do-over. So if at some point, you know, you, 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 you get to that altar and you're saying for better, for worse, and everything, okay? And then some, um, somehow down the line, circumstances change, mm -hmm. uh, emotions change, things happen, and you, you feel that you've put in your best, and then you want to have a do-over. It's okay. We need to normalize people Pastor, actually living. It's okay. Can't be seen. It's, it's okay. my life. It's my life, we're, and we're God not, loves you well enough for me to live it. We're not arguing about that. Yeah. We're arguing about yeah. um, receiving gifts. I, my, for oh, my 60th birthday, 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 I'm answering her question. For my 60th birthday, they bought me a car. I imagine if that car had come from one governor, mm -hmm. or would I have been able to go and declare it to my partner that yeah. I have a car? And see, there will be no questions asked. <laughs> when it, on what basis would they give On what basis? <laughs> who are you that they want to give you a car? <laughs> you know, do you understand? So, yeah, I hear what you're, you've just said about it's your life. It's your, but once you've decided to give that life. Or share that life. Or share that life, sorry. Yes. To another human being. There are certain things you can do that will respect mm. that partner, that person that you have decided to share your life with. There are certain things I don't think you should do. Right. Well, let me take this call from Work. Like... Good morning, Work. You're live. Wow. Good morning this to you nice. all. How are you doing? You're live. Go ahead, please. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate the topic. Yes. Uh, I feel like uh, with my experience so far, uh, the more we try as much as possible and to make sure we do unto others what we want to get back ourselves, that would be a good step in the way, whether you are in a marriage, a relationship, a dating ship, or a situation ship, any which way. So in that regard, if you are doing to your partner or whoever you are with what you want to get back in return, I feel like, you know, karma is not a bitch when it comes to that situation. And when you try as much as possible to have that communication and that conversation that is positive, try as much as possible to learn one or two things positively moving forward on learning those negative activities and not that, that bad energy moving forward as well. So when it comes to African mentality with marriages, divorce, and the rest like that, you know, it's that with you projecting other people's relationships marriages and all other things that especially this uh, 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 motivational speakers will be telling you about their marriage and the rest like that. Don't compete with anybody. Live your own life within your own capability and capacity with your spouse and your children. You don't have to learn from anyone. Learn from the Almighty. There are so many things that have been stated and Slated clearly in the holy books regarding marriage, how to be successful in marriage. You don't need the, you don't need any other book. And if you are an atheist, try as much as possible to consider yourself, to consider your partner, and be the living example of what you expect back in return. So when you have a relationship or you are dating someone, and it's about oh, I want to look at your phone today. I want to look at your phone tomorrow. That means there is no trust. So why belong into that kind of situation in the first place? Exactly. Thank you very much, Work. I really appreciate this. Let me take this comment from um, Edo, um, Edo Epong for saying, a friend of mine says, any gift you cannot transparently declare to your spouse should not be accepted. In life, nothing goes for nothing. Mm. Accepting business-related gifts is different. Mm. So that's and that's and that uh, comment. This, yeah. Someone called the Coaching Nation sent me this message relationship and gifts there are levels to gifts may we not receive gifts that will scatter our emotions <laughs> <laughs> the key is contentment once you are contented with what you have 
and where you are, nothing shakes you. Yeah. However, run from yeah, but I, I want to. I want to. I want us to also look at this from a different perspective, in the sense of communication and delivery, right? Mm. Because you can you you, might, you can say, okay, I communicated it to her. Or I asked her, but well, how was your delivery, right? Mm. Most times, you might come, someone might not be doing something wrong, but how you come at them can make them become defensive. And then you become suspicious of that. Because especially when you're dealing with a stubborn person, I'm a very stubborn person. Mm -hmm. So if you want to ask me questions or have the best of me, make me feel like that I have a say in my own life, <laughs> even though I'm respecting you. Mm. If you come at me like you're trying to force me or other me, you won't get the best of me. You understand so what we need to respect each other. Yes, so we have to respect each other. We have very little time left because I wanted, there was one more, because I know, and I'm still going to ask you about your, your business and what you're working on in a few minutes. But there was one that issue, marital issue, that I want, I want us to address before we go. I know we're having comments on, do you have tweet tweets on this, on this yeah. issue? issue? Let's, let's, let's take a few comments so that we can involve them in the conversation before I take my final. Any <laughs> topic, do you have any? Just reason yeah. says, is marriage actually in the Bible? Ah. <sighs> <laughs> As I'm just reading, you know, on it says, Tokpa is making sense. In Africa, the whole society is connected to your marriage, whether you like it or accept it or not. That was a light bulb, yeah. Yeah. What else? Do you want to say yeah, something? I can no, continue. No, no. Continue, please. Um, new, new dawn. Let's, let's go home. Let's go home. This caller has finished the every conversation. <laughs> 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 Let me take Toy. Good morning, Toy. Thanks for calling. You're alive. Oh, my God. Tony. Um, um, my, my conclusion is... Tony, we can't hear you. Married. Okay. When you're getting married, you should set your priorities straight. Midnight calls are not allowed. Mm. If you want to be in marriage, be in marriage. If you want to be outside marriage, be outside marriage. Don't do something that will just complicate your happiness and the life of your children. That is just how I say. So, so, thank you very much, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Just reading says companionship in marriage is the key, not ownership. Just respect each other and each other's independence. Um, Oluwa Bukola says, you cannot give joy from an empty vessel. Be happy first. Yeah. Ghania says, well, marriage is about compromise for me and it's from both ends. But the connection and love built in earlier years determines how they will both spend the latter years, mm. either together or apart. So, someone said, like, Mariah, you've not shared your own story. Let me just share my own. <laughs> I have, I, we, I, mean, I get gifts all the time, like, mm. because we're on TV, people send us stuff. And I, so I try to put a bridge, so they send it to my PA. Mm. I don't have anybody contacting me directly. So you send it, and she now comes to me and said, this person said that person thank them, or said, reply them on Instagram, or she even replies them for me sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. So I try to put a demarcation. Now, you meet some people in certain places that say, ah, Mario, you do send me your account number, let me do something. Of course, I always share everything. My, my husband has to, because he will ask you, you know. He, but he doesn't, he's not really concerned. Yeah. He, doesn't, he doesn't really care how much money enters your account. He, he doesn't ask you that kind of questions. But... I usually volunteer the information. Oh, mm. Lagba just saw me yesterday. Oh, mm. Ask my camera and send me the oh, you are, you are just you're lucky, you're blessed. That's yeah. it. So, you know, nobody's demanding of me mm. to tell just them. Because the relationship is good. Out of respect for my husband, I just say, this is what happened. This is the person mm. that gave me money. This is how much I got. And that's it. And, mm. and I think we're there. So, it's just communication. And, both understanding. Yeah. and he has given you, he has given you a, a, a room driving to be. ground. A room yeah. to be. That was what I said. Yes. 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 That's he's that's that's room. Room. Yeah, he's been here. Ogu says, hide nothing from each other. Communication is key. key. Mm. And I agree totally there. Because once you communicate, once there is lack of communication, there will Everything be distrust. Everything is breaking down. Engineer so, Jibola Tijani, as usual, says, your topic this morning is awesome. The foundation of any relationship should be mm -hmm. on trust because trust brings no suspicion. Whatever you don't know will never hurt you. Some suspicions are even sinful according to the Hadith. Partners are equally enjoined to be open with their partners. Trust and mutual understanding is the key to successful relationships. I think we are all, both religions, mm -hmm. religions are saying the same thing. So really, in a nutshell... Um, let's respect each other and let's ensure that we, we set our boundaries when it comes to things like this. For those of us who are high flyers in our various businesses, bank, bank, bank EDs, they, these are people that will continually get gifts from all yes, sorts so. of people. It's always good for you to declare and just, just sort of respect for your spouse. Mm -hmm. Either you be a man or a woman. Tell your spouse, ah, like what I gave me this business. And there's some women that will be giving you because they are doing two things into the front. Because they're trying yeah, to they want to come, come in. close to you. Yes. Also, no, because we know 
we are women, we know mm. when a man is trying to get close, mm. we know we see the signs, mm -hmm. so we can't pretend it's not with them, we don't see the signs, but we should always put our boundaries. Hey, right. He's getting close, no, I'm not encouraging him now, but you're collecting, uh, but you'll be collecting the gift. I'm not encouraging him. Why are you doing like this? Trust me now. Uh? I find a caller from just let me see <laughs> back. Oh, you're live. I come to our guest. Hello, back. Oh, you're live. Morning. Good morning. Oh, very morning. interesting topic. Good morning. Go ahead, Mr. Bako, you're live. Go ahead. All right. Um, uh, before I give my view, Morayo, I just want to ask if you are done with um, yesterday's issue of praise. Are you okay with it? I have accepted. Ah, Although I'm waiting for the courts to define right, spray, right. but I've accepted. No more spray. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> I'm a first time caller, actually. Welcome to the show. First time caller. Yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. The issue, the issue on now is um, the issue of uh, gifts to our wives. You see, that is a very serious issue. And um, honestly, um, the Bible says once you come together as husband and wife, you are one. So there should be trust. And by the time that your wife has begin to receive gifts from others, you know, it is, I'm not saying it is wrong. It is okay. But if this gift should continue from one person, that is where you begin to suspect. Like YK said, this man is going to give her for every month, he's going to send something for her. If I am her husband, I will ask, hi, let's go and greet this person. That is when she opens up to you and tells you the truth. At times, some ladies hide from it. And that is where the fear is. If it continues to come from one person, that is where you will suspect. So we should be very careful, like one of you said. Yeah. We should distance okay. ourselves from such yes. things. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Thank Marco. So we have to wrap up on this, but I really appreciate... Um, all the comments and the callers we've gotten so far on this topic. But really, in a nutshell, um, gifts is an inroad into your heart, into your mind, into your friendship, into relationships. So we need to guard that and guide our, our marriages the best we can. But well, coming back to our guests, because I know that you are... Can I just read one message for Amaka? Okay, go ahead. It's from Oluwa Shanke. <laughs> yes, okay. Yes. Amaka will make a good wife. Hey! She hey. knows what she wants. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I'm an Akoyibo, they say. So we're not looking for anybody, correct wife or a correct husband. The yes. of Lagos will be in that way. Of course, but now. But shut it down, Lagos. You know now. But that's where yeah. it is. Wherever it is. No spray. <laughs> no spray. We'll send the money via mail. Yes. We we'll, we'll can't We'll, we'll, we'll be spraying telepathically. But um, <laughs> this is a great well, Pastor Grace of so Let me just give you a few minutes to just tell us what you do. Um, how you're empowering women, and it's because since you're, since you're our guest co host, they will give you a few minutes to talk to you. So as, as, as I'm being a pastor, what else do you do? And oh. How can we um, support your, your, your work? Okay, thank you so much for having me again. I'm so glad to be here. Um, I'm a wealth strategist. So, uh, in a nutshell, I just help people to create wealth, create, sustain, and transfer. Because I, I didn't meet wealth anyway as a human. So I created wealth around me. I sustained it. Now I'm transferring. So one of the things that I, I have been able to do is to be able to find out how everybody can be more than what you are physically. And we're talking about women. Most of the problems in the marriages are actually finance. Uh, because as a wealth coach, I've, a lot of people talk to me. And I come to understand that Everybody needs to be comfortable. The man needs to even need you as a help, you know. Uh, looking at the society we live in now, personal finance is very important. And personal finance is not taught in schools. And the reason why it's something that um, the whole system of this world was created by humans. And they had to create your syllables, everything, just to put you and confide you to be comfortable in their own decision. But the truth is, you could actually live beyond yourself. And finance is so important. It's not something we shouldn't talk about. And as women, 
uh, over the years, I've been able to help a lot of people to understand that the concept of money and currency is two different things. Maybe on years. Yeah. You've made lots of women. I've made a lot of, even now we are clocking the billions uh, for women just to discover themselves and see that they are valuable and help themselves come out from that shell and add value to the society mm. because women are very important in society. And this last year we started, um, uh, thank you so much for coming to speak with the women. We started what we call the Limitless Woman. A woman that is not constrained by society, by the, uh, anything. Just being able to be limitless in every level. Finance, marriage, career. You could actually be 360. You know, one of my coaches told me something like, um, you can be everything that you want to be. What is important is how do you want to be known when you are 70 years? Mm -hmm. So you must look at your life today and tell yourself the truth and get whatever help you need so that by 70, mm -hmm. you'll be excited that you lived a fulfilled life. So we have this conference um, every year. We're going to be having this particular um, start today. Mm -hmm. We have speakers from tech, um, um, oil and gas. But the main reason is for women to hear that people did it. Mm -hmm. They were able to do it. You know, she was not a real estate person. She heard that women can be successful in real estate. She went to look for you. She went to look for me. <laughs> yes. And she's she excited you. that she yes. did. Yes. And yes. now I'm so proud of the big things she's doing. Yeah. So you need people. You need help. Don't just keep sending messages. Come out. Go to conferences and get something from people that have done something. Always mm. ask, how did you do it? Mm. A lot of people ask me, how did you leave Okrika and become this relevant in society, both local and international? Mm. Success is a game and it is something that can be learned mm -hmm. there is nobody even if you have all the money doesn't mean you end successful mm. so for me i like the fact that i'm able to teach finance because nobody gave me finance so mm. if i'm able to move from that place to this place there must be something that i know mm. and so that's what i'm teaching the woman strength to profit many women know how to talk and gossip do you know how much you can make <laughs> from talking from the talking you are talking <laughs> free talk yeah. <laughs> so there's so much nobody came to this world powerless or without value you just need to learn how to package the value mm. and put a price tag you try to <coughs> now do you know what i've started doing because I, I am able to give you growth strategy i've been doing it for years i can come into this space and tell you how it can become times 10 mm. x 10 or all, all i see is ten, times in things like 10 grow 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 like i said grow, grow do you, you know but now you try and pick my brain, I give you the invoice. <laughs> <laughs> we receive the invoice. We receive the invoice. But the truth is, you, you're just giving me 10% of 100%, so it's not a big deal. Mm. I, mean, I, I mean, I think that one of, one of the reasons why um, I, w I was drawn to you was because Tokwe did tell us, tell us very clearly on this show that when she, was, when she was finding herself in the real estate, she went online to find who exactly who are the players in this industry. And then she came up with your name. And she went online to find you and sent you a yeah. message. You invited her over. And since then, you've been one of our coaches. And she has always talked about how great, how, because, I mean, I, mean, I, can, I know Tokwe. I don't know any other person. But it's Tokwe I know. I know her journey. I know her process. I know the steps she was taking. I know the movement she was making, the who she was talking to. She was telling us, I was, and, I, and I saw the result. So because I see the result, I know that you're legit. And that's why I'm really um, encouraging you. And I'm hoping that um, Saturday is a success and more people can learn I'm going from to be you. there. You're going to be there too? Yes, I'm going to I'm, be unfortunately, there. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be there. I'm <laughs> being in Ibadan. But mm -hmm. I mean, I know that you've been impacting a lot of young yeah, people. Yeah, you were there last year. I was there last so year. It was still, fantastic. It's still very. Yeah, uh, and I'm really there's a lot of that. things that people have done. So one of the sets. Uh, people that came last year. It's just one. I didn't think I was going to do it again. You know, I'm very busy. So I'm trying to run away from so many things. But this is divine, ordained. Uh, I was asked by the Spirit of God to do it again. Because Limitless Woman, for me, is more than a conference. It's an experience. And you will definitely leave the place knowing exactly what you're supposed to do. You realign yourself. Right. You'll be motivated. You'll be inspired. Uh, she has given us some time of coaching. I hear yeah. that she gave us so, some of the people who send them to different coaches, right. different mentors yeah. to, yeah. Just to just them. advise them and keep them moving. Let me tell you something. The women are on now. And just find yourself and plug yourself somewhere. Okay. The word is transferring to, to wrap oh, up. Yes. Yeah, yes, no, I, that was, it was in Limited Simon that uh, we met Sophia. That was where I met Sophia and ah. brought her in. Oh. One of the things I love about conferences is that you will meet you, you, the network. You will meet yeah. people that 
you probably maybe your circle she's an island person a mainland we wouldn't have met but we've done a lot of business together she's made clothes for us yeah, she made my clothes show. for Dubai. Yes, and it was oh, at that conference last year. Yes, yes oh, it was Sophia, like, and we met her oh, at your yes. events. Yes. Events always provide a platform to connect and meet yeah. people, meet new friends. So wishing you the best on Saturday. Good luck. Yeah, yes, limited to so social media. So I think we are that's... inviting you. Mm -hmm. Oh, for I... I, I, I next one. I already have something. Harry. Ah, no, are you going to Paris? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank that you. is all we can take on today. So hope you learned a few things as we have. Disclose your gifts to your spouses. If don't you like do anything don't. high. Don't hide. Sorry? Okay, what did you say? I said, if, if you, you like, like don't, don't, you will know how far. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you violent. tomorrow. Bye for now. Bye for now. That's not violent. <laughs>